by access, we're talking about visa-free access, where you could just book a ticket and show up in that country with your passport without getting prior permission. Henley Global is a consulting firm that uh, dabbles in residence and citizenship planning. Actually, more than dabbles. That's their area of specialty. And they publish an annual visa restrictions index. So what they did is tally up how many other countries you can travel to visa-free under your U.S. passport. The maximum attainable score is 219. So okay. if you look at who came out on top, you would expect that the U.S. would be right there, and it is, but it shares that first slot with four other countries, Finland, Sweden, Germany, and the U.K. Um, that means the score of 174 means that of the all the countries in the index, these passport holders can travel visa-free to 80% of those countries in the index. Number two is Canada and Denmark with a score of 173. So they are able to travel visa-free to 173 countries. And you see a bunch of Asian countries start to show up in number three with a score of 172. Japan and South Korea notably show up there, Belgium, France, Italy as well. Um, on, in number three with a score of 172. Who's at the bottom of the list? Ah, glad you asked. Last place, Afghanistan with a score of 28. So there are 28 countries that if you were an Afghanistan passport holder, you could travel to without getting a visa. Iraq is runner up, second to last, and third to last is a tie between Pakistan and Somalia. What this list is, is a reflection of the different geopolitical relationships between individual countries. Because by deciding who can enter your country visa free shows the state of your country in the international community. So you saw how large, wealthy, European American countries, uh, you know, were at the top. Small, troubled countries tend to be at the bottom of the list, like Afghanistan, like right. Iraq. Up and coming countries can start flexing their muscles as well. Brazil, for instance, makes U.S. passport holders pay $160 to get a tourist visa and show them your itinerary for your flights, for your hotels, uh, in order to just get a tourist visa. You know why? Because the U.S. charges Brazilian passport holders $160. Tit for tat. I would imagine that this might be especially helpful for businessmen and women, mm -hmm. especially for U.S. businesses, because they need to get in, they need to make deals, they need to get out, yeah. and they don't need red tape. And money is not often an object for those who have a lot of money at stake. Sure. You know, they, they're willing to pay the fees. It's the hassle factor that's an issue. I, I was checking with Christian Kalin, who's the chairman and partner at Henley, and he says um, the maximum number of passports you can have for Americans, Canadians, Swiss, and the British right now is unlimited, as long as you have the resources. Overall, more than half of the world's countries allow you to hold multiple citizenships. And, of course, getting additional passports is more and more important in this world of globalized trade and geopolitical tensions. What's the alternative then if you want to get the alternative citizenship and money if they were no issue? Okay, if there were no issue and you, Mark Crumpton, wanted a second passport in addition to your U.S. passport and again, money were no issue, you should try to get a Malta passport. It's an EU passport. It's an English-speaking country, um, aside from the U.K. and Ireland, within the EU. It's reputable and stable and you just have to pay over $1 million. Non-refundable contributions, <laughs> government bonds, okay, yeah, some yeah. property investment, but you could, for instance, with a Malta passport, EU passport, uh, work and live in the UK.